today's Friday morning. This week here has been a little tough. We had Hurricane Irma. We started getting rain Monday afternoon. And it rained Monday afternoon all the way through. We were even still getting some rain Tuesday night. So the ground, and it wasn't a lot, a lot of rain. It was just one of those slow rains. There's a uh, airbase jet right there. I can't find him in the viewfinder there. Maybe y'all hear him. We're just, we got Columbus Air Force Base is sitting right over there. We're kind of northwest of Columbus Air Force Base is where we at. So this, and, and it's a trainer base, so they fly all day right here, around through here, making circles and loops, landing and takeoffs and landings. But, so we got, uh, it was still raining Tuesday night. And so the ground is, uh, it just, it's one of the slow rains where it just kind of saturated in pretty good, you know, which is a lot better than what it was last year at this time. If y'all remember, those of y'all who's been following us for a good while now, last year was, was mind boggling dry. Crazy, crazy dry. And uh, it just, I mean, we didn't get no rain till the first week of December. So it is nice having some rain grounds a little bit. Got more moisture in it this time than it did last year. And the dust is not near as bad as it was last year either. So I'm fueling, I've got all the trucks loaded and I'm fueling right now. It takes about 20, 20 minutes or so to, to fuel this thing up. So I'm gonna include some footage of uh, Kevin tracking his, uh, processor out the other day before the rain hit and then the uh, very end of this video is a video that a guy sent to me I believe his name Zach I think is his name he sent it to me a while back and I've had it I just hadn't used it but it's uh, them moving their uh, knuckle boom loader you know, trailer mounted loader with a skitter and and you can kind of see that that uh, what it takes to move that thing. Y'all seen some videos that I've shot of us moving our 437, and those things can be very trying to uh, try to move. But I'm gonna fuel. I may add a little bit more video here, in just a second. But I'm gonna fuel. I'm gonna go ahead and grease while I'm while I'm parked here too, and get it going and get that done. All right, my Sunday's video from this past Sunday, I got a bunch of questions about it, and that was to be expected. It was the one where I, we were taking down the oak tree that uh, got sprayed by the chemicals when they were spraying the adjoining property, and it burnt the tree, and I got the job to cut the tree down. And uh, I got one, one, I got a couple questions on it. One of them was pretty repetitive was why didn't we just cut that tree down with the with the rubber tire tree cutter, the Tiger Cat 726 that we had there. Well there's uh there's two or three main reasons. Number one, the tree was just too big. Uh, I don't think a lot of times some people understand how big some of this stuff is, but if you notice when I bored that tree behind the hinge I bored in from both sides and my bar just barely did overlap. That tree was over three foot diameter. I mean, it was bumping 40 inches because I cut, I run in a 20 inch bar on that saw is all I'm running. Well, the cutter only will cut about a 24 inch cut slap through if everything's just right. Number two, that tree, if you notice when I walk between the swimming pool and the tree, that's one of those plastic sided swimming pools. I could touch the pool and the tree at the same time. I mean, it was that close. And then there's a fence on the, on the left hand side of the tree, if you're facing it, facing toward the house. So you had like a little corner in there. Well, you couldn't, if you run that saw head in there, that saw head disc weighs 1400 pounds and it's 60 inches in diameter and it's spinning at over 1200 rpms the chips that come out of it are about like that and they're like bullets when they come out of it and the chute where they discharge out is on the right hand side those things would have went slap through the side of that swimming pool i mean that you and then you got to deal with that weight of that tree i said i think i said in the video that that log probably weighed 2000 pounds 
that log, I was way off on that. That log's gonna go about 4,000, 4,500 on an oak that size, that length is what that log's gonna go. And then you hadn't even figured in the top. There's no way you could have handled that tree. You could you could cut it if you could double cut the tree. If you were in a wide open area where nothing mattered, you were gonna hit anything. You know, you weren't gonna hit anything. You just cut it, hit it on, on two pieces like this right here from each side like that at about a 45 angle and then come in from the back side and hit it on the back for your third cut and shove it over. But somebody commented this morning and they talked about how when you're doing stuff you stack the deck of cards in your favor and he said that's exactly what I done and he's exactly right. Uh, I climbed the tree because I wanted to root in a perfect spot. I wanted that root perfect and people, I had some people ask, well, why why did you not just pull that pull root over the crotch? Well, here's why I didn't do that. That pull root was three quarter diameter and it's got a braided eye on the end. That rope is heavy. I'm talking about heavy. And on an oak like that, one of those old what I call post oaks with that real bad bark on it, they ain't no way you're gonna pull that heavy root through a tight crotch on there. Plus, trying to isolate limbs with it and things like that just wasn't gonna work. But when you're, you gotta think about it like this too. You can go from hero to zero that quick in a job like that. You do like the guy said, you stack the cards all in your favor before you ever get started going because think about this, you or that guy or whoever has worked their entire life paying for that place where they live right there. That's their house, everything they own is in that house. You slip up, do one thing wrong and that tree goes through that house, that tree right there would have completely covered that entire house and annihilated it. Well, some people think, well tree, you know, you have a tree hit a house it just tears up, you know, the wood structure, things like that. Well, that, no, that's not the case. Think about this. When a tree hits a house, you got all your wiring. I've seen trees rip wires out of plugs, switches, stuff like that. You got wires that go through the attic. That tree goes down through there. It tears all that wiring up, completely up. And think about your plumbing. What's it do to your plumbing? It destroys your plumbing in your house. If you're on a conventional floor, you just ruined the foundation right there too. So it's not just cosmetic stuff. And I tell people all the time, and I'll tell you all this right here too, like in the Southeast here, if you got a tree that can touch your house, cut it down, get it away from it. Uh, I have people all the time, I do tree work like that right there, like that guys that y'all saw. They, the tree is in their house or done tore up something at their house and they say, I should have cut that tree down a long time ago. I should have got it down because it wasn't worth the grief that is causing me now. And that's right. I mean, you can get some shade, but I don't have any trees that can hit my house. So I hope I answered several questions that people had about that. So hope you enjoy the rest of this video and then the later taters at the end uh, and all that. So we'll catch y'all later. See y'all. the ridge blocked in and I just cleaned Kevin out of the spot right there where he can get back this way. He's fixing to go over that pile of bark right there.